are ordinary people with an extraordinary ambition. What Christine and Tongo and her friends want is an end to corruption in a country where it's too often a way of life. Today they've taken to the streets of Rukunjiri in southwest Uganda with the boys and the girls in the local band. Their message? Corruption means this country of wealth and talent can't play to its natural strengths. When we talk about corruption in Uganda, combination, big time, small time, integrated, all kinds of, all kinds of corruption. We, we also, uh, as we campaign against corruption, uh, highlight that corruption we, where government officials are paid where work is not done. They spend all their time doing private work and, and yet they occupy a public office. Corruption is a serious problem in Uganda. Christine is from the Uganda Debt Network, the UDN, an NGO which tries to make sure the country's scarce resources go to the poor and not to corrupt officials. Under a new debt relief program coordinated by the World Bank, Uganda has been let off 60% of the $120 million it pays to service foreign debt every year. Christine and her friends in the UDN, Uganda's informal debt police, want to check the money Uganda's saved gets through to the places that need it, like the Rukunjiri Health Center. Hello. 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 For over 20 years, doctors here have had to do without running water. Now they've been able to build a new water tower, paid for with money that had been earmarked to pay interest on international debts, but which can now be spent fighting poverty. These young mothers and their children now have clean water when they most need it. How many days? And in a country where 16 out of 100 children die under five, clean water is a matter of life or death. Inside, Christine checks the water really is working. There have been plenty of times in other clinics when local officials have ripped off resources before they've reached people who need it. But no such problem here. I think it's a good, uh, good job done. To make sure kids like two-year-old Valentina and her mother really do benefit from debt relief, Uganda's paying the cash it's saved into a special pot called the Poverty Action Fund. So how are you feeling now? And it's the Poverty Action Fund cash that's helping these patients. <laughs> debt relief has really changed the performance of this health center in terms of provision of water, safe water, now water run, can run directly into the maternity ward, the washrooms, the consulting rooms. Uh, they did not have flowing water before. The money that comes into the Poverty Action Fund, which is debt relief money, also provides for subsidy on drugs. So access to drugs is now easier for the community. The health center serves over 30,000 people. So they've all benefited? They've all benefited. From debt relief? From debt relief, yes. I really now feel that debt relief can make a lot of difference. Christine's based a day's drive from the Rukunjiri Hills in the capital Kampala, and she relies on local volunteers to help check debt relief money really is going to the right people. Monitoring where the money goes is an important, though not an easy, task. We need to sensitize the people. We need to create awareness within the communities that whatever services being made in their areas, they belong to them. They are the owners of those services, and therefore, they should have all the access. Mm. That is the information. And that's why they should participate yeah, in yeah. making sure that so the systems work. That for them. that that duty mm. is going to cost you a lot in terms of uh, mobilizing the people, yes, in yes. terms of facilitating the monitors. Yes. It's not an easy job. We have found it very difficult. In fact, moving, moving transport is really a hindrance because I'm lucky. I have a motorcycle, but. Uh, most of our monitoring committee members don't have. And even then, the, the, the fuel, the fuel has escalated so high, you, yes. you can't really manage. So we are limited in movements. Yeah. Otherwise, we would be able to move to schools, to institutions, to people, if we had the means. 
But today, with Christine's van, they can check out the local primary school. I'm sure the headmaster has much. Uh, My name is Christine Nantong. There are rumours the debt relief money here is not doing all the headmaster would wish. Yes, we are glad to be here. Thank you. We are mostly here to see uh, what debt relief is The head explains what debt relief money has brought the school. We've got many things apart from getting the hard cash. We have got textbooks, we have a medical kit yes. and an arm ref. Yes. So we have it, in a, we have some medicines in stock. And so since you started getting uh, this it seems money like, from seems like this table. Yes. But as the more sparsely furnished classrooms testify, the debt relief money channeled through the Poverty Action Fund only goes so far. This uh, fund which uh, has been channeled through the Uganda government, has so far put up this, uh, what we call magnificent two classroom building. Really, it, it has come to our rescue so much so that we are too congested. So that debt relief money has actually made a better classroom for your kids? Uh, it has. It has done this plus textbooks. Uh, but what we are lacking as of now is the furniture for the pupils. They just sit on the floor Though, though good floor, but they, they have nothing to write on. What does that mean for their education? Yeah, oh, it means uh, that is a disaster anyway, because they can't, as infant as they are, they cannot write properly without where to place their books for uh, good handwriting. So, so you've got a classroom, but there's nothing for them to write on? It is just a room for nothing to write on. Uh, we have books, yes, we have students, we have teachers, but furniture, no. Outside, Christine finds the same problem. The new resources made available by debt relief help, but don't always help quite enough. Across Uganda, it's estimated two million extra pupils have been enrolled because of debt relief. And here they're building a block to train some of the teachers who will be needed. <laughs> Close by, the pupils' old toilets have been replaced. So before... Before we were provided with this yes. facility, mm. we used this one and this one. Okay. And there was a lot of problem, especially with both girls and boys yeah. sharing one. But now, at least we have some relief. But while there are new toilets, there's still no running water. As for collecting rainwater, well, there's a rain tank but no gutters. Near the center there. What we need now is water. Yes. Uh, to use, so they, can, to use they have nowhere our, even to wash their uh, hands when they're... We are lacking water mainly. Mm -hmm. We have the tank, but we have no gutters. But gutters are cheap. Uh, even, what do they say? Even, you know? Uh, no, even as cheap as they are, we have no funds for it. The debt relief is getting through because uh, we have seen that the money comes to the district officials and the headmaster has shown us that uh, the money is actually utilized to provide these children with sh sh adequate shelter for them to be taught. So to be blunt, it's not being creamed off, the, the money, the debt relief is getting through to these kids? It is getting through to them. And you're able to check that? Yes, we are able to check that. The monitoring committees actually look at the figures and have seen that the money has been utilized for the purpose in many of the districts, including this one. But there's still a lot more that needs to be done, clearly. There is a lot more to be done because these children need, need the water, we need to have enough teachers to feed into the increased numbers of students, and so on. The kids are happy to draw water themselves, but it's four kilometers away. Here, the basics of life are still a luxury. Water has to be carried back to school and back home. Dead relief cash may bring these kids a few better classrooms, but as Christine knows, it's no substitute for economic development. And a thriving economy could be within Uganda's reach. The country, after all, has an often easy to come by natural wealth. And while there is malnutrition, it's often because children are fed the wrong food rather than because of drought or famine. So the best thing for Uganda's future generations, some say, would be for the country to develop a thriving free market economy. And not to keep relying on aid or debt relief or any other kind of handout from the West.
During our tour of Ruck and Jury with the Uganda Debt Network, we stopped to show Christine and her colleagues interviews with two leading voices in the debate over debt relief. Supporter Anne Pettifer and first Steve Hankey, who's strongly opposed to letting countries off interest payments on their foreign debt. We have a, a big political bandwagon uh, going full speed now in favor of debt relief. Everyone from U2 to the Pope is for it, so it's a little bit hard to... Uh, squeeze in with a dissonant voice on the issue. I think, uh, however, reality requires uh, a, a little bit of skepticism about this whole project and whether it's going to do any good for the impoverished people that are involved in so-called debt relief. Why are you so skeptical? Well, I'm skeptical because debt relief really is nothing more than foreign aid wrapped in a new package. And foreign aid in the past has led to low levels of economic freedom, lots of corruption, uh, no civil liberties, a few political liberties. Uh, all of these things in a package always lead to very low levels of economic growth and prosperity. So if you're injecting more foreign aid, another form of foreign aid, it, it might move things Backward. In fact, I think it probably will move things backward. So I remain very skeptical and, and, and in fact, opposed to the whole notion of debt relief. I think it's a, it's a grand fraud. But wouldn't the creditor nations, the World Bank and the IMF, say that they are now trying to impose conditionalities, not just of market reform, but of accountancy and transparency? We've heard this song ever since the first drop of foreign aid ever went to any country, that it would, there'd be controls, accountability, conditionality, and the, and the foreign aid, m most of the foreign aid literally has gone into Swiss bank accounts or gone into crony bank accounts of one sort or another or gone to the military to buy more military equipment. Campaigner Anne Pettifor concedes corruption is a danger but says it can be overcome. When we began our campaign, uh, many Africans and many Latin Americans came to us and said, don't write off the debts. We know that our corrupt elites will put them back into British and Swiss banks or into American banks. They will not go to the people. We therefore want you to impose very tough conditions to ensure this money goes to the poor. But, they said, those conditions cannot be run from Washington. It's not possible to sit in Washington and watch whether or not our local elites are spending the money on schools and on sanitation for the elderly. You've got to empower us to do that locally. And we agree with that. And we, we believe that l local people are the best people to monitor whether or not their local elites are doing the right thing by the money. This time we're told it's different because there will be uh, monitoring, there is monitoring, uh, to make sure that countries don't get the prize of debt relief before they have some kind of transparency and accountability. Well, I mean, if, if you... And indeed, it, most of them are not getting the money because it, of that. It, if you believe in the tooth fairy, that's your prerogative. Isn't a group like the Uganda Debt Network who are trying to monitor at a grassroots level that money really does go to the poor after debt relief? I mean, aren't they doing exactly what you're calling for? Well, uh... The, I, I, again, I would rather award the prize after the race is completed. I want to wait and see if these NGOs like the Uganda Debt Relief Network can actually uh, live up to their promises. Historically, n none of this has ever worked. I think the only thing that can possibly help them over the long run are vibrant economies, and the only way you get a vibrant economy is to have a, a free, free market economy and, and have a society where you've got civil liberties and political freedoms. What do you make of all that? Uh, about Professor Steve, what I would say is that maybe the system of learning, uh, the, 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 the people, the governments uh, responsible for discharging the, these, uh, these uh, loans, uh, could rather be advised. Like, say, now we can see the element of monitoring, the communities getting involved so that corruption could be checked totally. That, that could be a sure way of ensuring that uh, whatever aid comes is put to the right use and that the communities benefit. If he could come here and look at places that we've been to and see how even the little relief that has been given can change lives of people, then he would know that it's not fraud. Do you believe, Warren, that you can convince 
ordinary people, debt relief money will come to them. Uh, definitely, yes. And uh, this one is, uh, we have got examples. Because since 1998, when we had the, the, I think the first debt relief, and it started coming, trickling to the grassroots, people now can have an example of what it can be like. Those t- still uh, on a limited scale, they can now see that what can actually be done. What the Uganda Debt Network want is not less debt relief, but more. And the reason is not just the poverty of the towns and countryside. Christine's friend Alice has taken her to visit an aging grandmother who lives close by. Her husband's died, and so have her children, victims of AIDS. That's a grandpa, but he died about 15 years ago. And all those children are now dead. So nobody's around, but they're all dead. Now the children are on their own with their grandmother. Just seven of Uganda's one million AIDS orphans. What's going to happen to these kids if she passes away? She will leave them here. Nobody, there's no way she can say because they will be left here because there's no way she can say, there's no more she can do. She will have to do what she can, but at the end, the Lord will look after the children. Mm-hmm. You see, what a use they are catering system when they are cooking, drinking from all their plates, saucepans, and they cook from that house, that little one. In school, some of these children have nothing to bring for lunch. No, they don't have breakfast, mm. and they have nothing for lunch, so they come and find what the lady had prepared. Mm. And I don't think she can afford to feed them twice, a lunch and supper. The visit has been proof for Christine that Uganda should not just have the interest on its debts forgiven, but should have its debts cancelled altogether, all $3.7 billion of them. Well, this family is, lives in abject poverty. They have no safe water near, they have no parenting, they have no adequate education because they spend all the day doing domestic chores and go to school when they're tired. The current conditions in this home are not the kind of home that a child would live in. And I think the Western world can afford to give a decent life to these children by cancelling the debt. That's what you want to see, the foreign debt cancelled to help kids like these? Yes, we now want total cancellation to give hope to the new generation. In the village, the band reaches its destination, a rally against corruption. The villagers know debt cancellation will remain a dream unless the critics are silenced and corruption stopped. Led by a trained actor, villagers are putting on an anti-corruption play. It's about a party-loving village priest who ingratiates himself with local politicians. The real priest looks on amused. The satire is not aimed at him, but it's still pretty credible, as every onlooker knows. Especially when the priest wrangles a job as a teacher. Now, entertainment, yes, entertainment, one million point five. And has the chance to fiddle the hospitality budget. Now, total income is... Seven million. He tries in vain to balance the books. And then you show an expenditure, five million, thirty thousand. This time it's the local headmaster who knows that while his honesty is not in question, there are other teachers who behave just like this one. This is my school, you understand? <laughs> Finally, the plainclothes policewoman comes to call. You could see that he was fidgeting with the figures. There are many officials, headmasters, teachers like that, aren't there? They are like that. And this play, in fact, it does a lot. It does a lot to those who are like that. What are you hoping to achieve? The total change of such people that are found in these malpractices, they will change. Wow.
launching that grassroots anti-corruption campaign is so that you, the people of Kunjiri, and all Ugandans participate in seeing that the resources benefit all the people. You have a role to play in ensuring that you are beneficiaries. That grassroots anti-corruption campaign is a campaign to arouse the people to take the responsibility to ensure that we all benefit from both debt relief resources and other national resources that the government and others mobilize from elsewhere. And I look forward to sharing with you. Thank you. Slowly, hearts and minds are changing. Uganda's young generation wants a corruption-free country. If they achieve it, they'll expect the West to cancel the debts that still cloud their future.